I was drinking a lot of scotch and six pack of beer in a day and and um, I was taking the bifedamin to keep me sober because I couldn't cut the job. They throw requests at you and you know that means you have to translate from the mind to the fingers a tune you don't really know. <laughs> That's what they call piano bars, you know. Melancholy baby. You might get to know that one, you know. I didn't know what I wanted to be, but I was 10. My father said, there's an accordion, and my cousin teaches accordion, and you learn accordion, you'll put in four hours a day. It wasn't too overflowing with uh, love. <laughs> I remember school. It was just like you just lived to day to day. There were some activities, or little triumphs that you get, you know. You could throw the baseball further and shit like that. And there were the chicks that you had to crush and so on, and cheerleaders. And I kind of was like a, a guy, a trans viewer, you know, watching it. Cut a class in school. <laughs> I didn't even finish. It was 44, and I took a job at a nightclub, strip joint. I went to Greenwich Village. I ended up playing with Max Kaminsky at a place called the Pied Piper. Then I, uh, I sussed out that it was a matter of knowing the chords and the melody. 
and playing in time. Welcome to Jazz here on WKCR FM in New York at 89.9 on your dial. This is Phil Schapp with you. And on today's broadcast, I'm going to give you a little dose of jazz histories. We're going to bring one of the great legends of bebop here to our KCR studios, right? On his arrival back in the States, the legendary Joe Albany. I came from a very square background, suburb of Atlantic City, Ventnor, New Jersey. And if there was a, if somebody robbed a store, it was headlines for weeks, you know, that type of thing. And uh, I had no idea what drugs were when I got into it. The first drug I took was not with birds, it was with a guy who's now dead. And, and he died that way with the spike in his arm and the blood coming down. They had to break down the bathroom door and he's in Potter's Field. father was a kid, uh, he, uh, he, he won a, a catechism contest, that's telling, you know, that the different rules of the faith, the Catholic religion and all, and the Hail Marys, etc. And, uh, and the prize was they, they took a bunch of kids to St. Peter's and locked them in overnight with all those statues in there. And it kind of frightened him, you know. But, but he used to go, when he went to school, in Italy, he used to notice that the, the rich kids always got the preference. Best seats, this and that, from the teachers. So that turned him against religion. And I'd look for God in the church and I couldn't find him. And a lot of people say that uh, jazz is the voice of the spirit of God. That's the closest to it. Jazz is the ideal state for any repressed person to express themselves because they're improvising. I think it's man's nature that to indulge himself, this makes him the difference between him and God. <laughs> it's imperfection. The, uh, it's, if, if he has access to creature comforts, pleasures, he'll take them. They come his way as an opportunity. That's part of it, isn't it? And the more sensuous the being, the more he's going to go for it. And a lot of artists are that we are that way, or we have been that way. And everybody's a singer, aren't they? Somehow, everybody can do this, if they have to answer, or whistle a tune. And all the world's the stage. I'm sure, and Shakespeare's lines, you know. Uh, and so the ones that get in it, Maybe they're pressed in that area to show themselves. And sometimes they, 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 they really feel they're not that much different. And uh, they, could it be that they've taken drugs to be different? 